Mobile computing? Empowerment? This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Clear. Get to the front of the line faster, safer, touchless. Get two months of Clear free at clearme.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is part three in a multi-part Mac Voices Live discussion about the dings that Apple put in the universe. This time around, we wrap up what was a surprisingly contentious discussion of mobile computing and get down to a basic fundamental of personal computing, and that is empowerment. Empowerment to do what you do faster, easier, better. Let's go to the panel. I'm going to jump in here because I we, we got to move on, but I, I I want to give kudos to Webb in the uh, in the chat room. He says like the old PowerBook Duo, the iPhone Duo, you know, and and that was an interesting concept because it it was sort of what Guy was saying, although not quite, but it was kind of there where you would slot that that PowerBook Duo into a, a slot, and then you it connected automatically to all the peripherals. That were connected to that dock, and it turned into a desktop desktop computer. So it was tried, and you know, I it, I it, had it one. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah and so, but, but I mean, it was Mac OS seven. It was System seven on on the the laptop, and then you closed it and you put it in the little VCR of the Duo dock. Look it up, right? And, and then the, it would show up on your screen, and it would still be System seven. It was exactly the same thing. I was using a keyboard and the the rolly ball on the Duo, and then I was using a keyboard and a mouse with the Duo dock. Yeah, so it was we the same system. We make like it we there agree. again. <laughs> David, I, I, I think I, Apple's answer to this is the cloud. So you put your documents in iCloud Drive or Drop Dro- Dropbox, hmm. so you can work on your Keynote on your mobile device, then you can work on it on your computer, then you can go back to your mobile device. Um, so um, I, I think Apple would say that's the way, you know, if you want to go between mobile and, you know, um, that that's our answer, which doesn't mean, you know, I, I, I see exactly, I've, I've wanted what you said, Guy, in the past. I don't think I would anymore, but, but, but basically the idea is like, well, there's a drive in this, you know, there's storage in this phone. Why don't I just, you know, why can't I just zip? And now I, you know, now I can work with those documents on, on some other device and maybe even use the processor. Although, you know, the phone, you know, there are heat constraints depending on what you're doing um, and, and, and whatnot. Um, and, and processes are cheap now. So, you know, what you're talking about is saving, having to buy another processor and another drive. Well, those things are cheap. The display is the expensive part anyway. So, you know, so what if we have extra processors? Um, they're, they're dirt cheap now. Yeah. Brad in the chat room says, back to my Mac was a feature some people used daily. And I agree mm-hmm. with that. You know, it's just, but to Kelly's point, th- they have to have a lot of research. Apple does not kill things for no reason. And mm-hmm. I, I firmly believe that. And, you know, the other problem guy that with what you're describing and David, I want to get you into this too, because you work in the corporate IT environment and I would see some, a lot of security issues and a lot of security concerns. If I had something the size of an iPhone, that was my primary business device. And I was carrying corporate data around with it all the time. Yeah, it's having a well, portable device. Having a portable device is, especially in the corporate world, you uh, you hit you hit it right right on, Chuck. Is 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 companies don't want you to have all that data with you, but they are protecting the device too. So you know, in the case of many corporations, you got you, you got the data protected in the four walls of whatever platform you're using, like an Intune in Microsoft or or something like that that protects it. But I was going to go back as far as devices go, and I was I was kind of thinking about the Chromebook and the Chromebook and and the Chrome OS. They had those Chrome sticks that you could have, so you had a portable device that you could just plug into a monitor or a TV or whatever and then there's your computer in a small device so why wouldn't you want to use something like that because that chrome is of course is all online it's not doesn't have storage and it can protect you but it's a it's a little different to what you were describing uh, when it comes to that particular device but uh, but i i think i think with in in corporate yeah i think i would be i'd be a little concerned about security for sure i agree so web i i let's 
I think we're going to put this on the shelf because Webb yes. uh, also pointed out something that I think is is a really good point. And, and I remember this when it came out. I remember the first time I saw it because I remember exactly where I saw VisiCalc for the first time. And Webb points out that, you know, VisiCalc put the personal computer in, in the business world and it helped him get his master's in the early 80s. And, and I mean, there's no way to describe for anyone that, that has grown up now what an impact VisiCalc had on, on the business world. It was a reason to buy a personal computer, period. If you ran nothing else, that was the reason to buy it. Mm-hmm. What I don't understand, though, is why this is on this list, because Apple didn't make VisiCalc. Um, it know. made the machine that to, run, to run it on. Yeah, but, you know, this list is dense Apple made, you know. Right. It, app, dense Apple made in the universe, and it just happened that, well, they had you know, 43 guys... and needed two more. <laughs> I, would, well, I, I think that that kind of brings up a point, too, of... I think Apple's greatness is on the backs of the journalists, the writers, the podcasters, the YouTubers, and the app developers that made the ecosystem what it is. I don't want to take any credit. I don't want to steal any valor from Apple, but I think what happened was there was a, a group of misfits that said, like, this is our platform. And... <laughs> Backend developer or full stack developer. So yeah, app developers do come last for me. <laughs> but it it is always that that mindset of like, look what Apple's doing, look what Apple's doing, look what Apple's doing. And then I don't ever think too hard about what Apple's doing. I think about what all of the people that have made careers off of what Apple is doing. And those are the people that I think should get these dings or should get these dings in the universe because in my opinion i knew nothing of apple until 2011 and what i saw when i did finally get into this ecosystem were like there are some people here that have been the biggest fans since 45 years ago that believed in this platform, that believed in this system. And even when it looked like the guy from Pepsi was going to drive it into the ground, it they still stayed behind it and they kept pushing it forward. So, you know, not to not to push on. I, I agree. I, I definitely agree with Jim here. VisiCalc's success doesn't need to be on a list of what Apple has done. But in my opinion, this whole list should be made up of things that people outside of Apple have done because it was all of them that made Apple as good as it was. Well, and I want to clarify too, that VisiCalc definitely belongs on a top 10 list of things in the computer industry in the last 50 years that have, that have made a dent, you know, in the mm -hmm. industry. Uh, VisiCalc was huge. Like Chuck said, I just don't understand why it's on a list of, you know, why is Apple things getting Apple credit? Did. That's the only thing I don't yeah. understand, but VisiCalc was, you know, that still has re well, you know reverberations well, to this day. Well, okay, so I I would repeat that Apple, you know Apple built the built the computer that VisiCalc was built on. So that was the first spreadsheet that anybody saw, and and that that was I'm not going to say a partnership, but you're right. And and at that point, if, if if memory serves, and I'd have to go back and do the research, I'm not sure there was a PC at that moment. To put mm -hmm. to, to build VisiCalc on. To put anything so th it, there... bef it was before the PC, but there were other personal computers. There 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 were CPM computers, and you know there were people selling software for that. And you know, yeah, but, there was, th th but there was nothing approachable, Jim. I mean, from a, for a, for a business guy back then, you know, the Apple II was something they could justify because they knew they could understand it and know how to use it. A CPM computer for, in those days. I mean that those were like the real geeks in the back room, the back room of the back room. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Clear. Get to the front of the line faster, safer, touchless. Zoom meetings are great, but there's nothing like doing business face to face. To make that happen, business travel is going to be more important than ever before. And if you are traveling for business, you know that time is money, and that's why you want to sign up right now for Clear. 
Clear helps ease your trip through security at airports and concert halls and stadiums by eliminating the need for your ID. Step into the clear lane at over 35 airports nationwide and use your eyes or your face to be recognized in seconds. A clear ambassador then walks you to the head of the security line and you are through and on your way to that next important meeting, your next important phone call, or a little extra time to catch up on your email. Enrolling is easy. Start online, finish up at the airport for the first time, and you're all set. You can even start using Clear right then and there. Over 5 million people are already using Clear for seamless experiences at airports, stadiums, concert halls, and more nationwide. You need to be the next one to sign up. Right now, for a limited time, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Go to clearme.com slash macvoices and use the code macvoices. Once again, that's clear, C-L-E-A-R, me, M-E, dot com, slash Mac Voices, with the code Mac Voices, for your first two months of Clear for free. Clearme.com, slash Mac Voices, and the code Mac Voices. Thanks to Clear for their support of Mac Voices. Um, well, no, there, like, there was a computer called a Sol. That was just like an Apple II. It was the same thing. It was in a case. It had a keyboard, and you just added a monitor. Um, so, um, it, you know, there were comparable things. And and actually, I I would give, you know, I, I'd almost reverse it in some ways. You know, VisiCalc gets a lot of credit, I think, for Apple's success. Um, the fact that, you know, those guys happened to write VisiCalc for the Apple uh, that's you know sold a huge amount of uh, of Apple IIs and propelled Apple right. you know right up the ladder. Without mm-hmm. without VisiCalc, you know we might have subtracted you know all these forty five other items. Um, and and it wasn't a partnership. That was just something these guys did that I don't think Apple even knew about until you know they came out with came out with it. Um, so mm-hmm. Apple was just lucky that 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 happened to happen. Brad in the chat room says 1976 for Apple II, 1981 for PC. Thank you, Brad, because yeah. after a while, things get a little fuzzy. But he also made another comment that's interesting. Do you give credit to Ford for the Model A or to the road builders? Chicken and the egg. The cavemen with the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think like, they, they were nuts it- by then. I mean, if you want to talk about the ding, like what you want to talk about is what it enabled people to do, right? Desktop publishing enabled people to have a different kind of job and to be able to maybe run that out of their house or whatever. And it enables Jim to have supported himself for low these many years as a software developer for this particular platform. It enables Jay to have the job that he has. It enables me to have one of my jobs as a person who sits in the back and smarts off about whatever it is that they're up to next. And, you know, and it enables people to be better in touch. Like think about how many miles, okay. Think about how many hours of FaceTime have happened in the last 12 months. Think about what it enables people to do. Think about what what it makes possible. Like Brittany's job is possible because of this technology. My other job is possible because of this technology. All of us hanging out here is possible because of this technology. All of these things that, that we do and that we now sort of take for granted are all things that have been enabled by the sorts of things that Apple has has developed and released well and that kelly i think that comes down to the bottom line about what personal computing is all about it's i mean we all love to geek out on the hardware what did i say what no is a computer no personal like it's the personal they're putting the the personal in the computing and like right you know yeah what i have you know this here has more technology in it than we used to send and retrieve successfully people from the moon. I always add the sure. part about retrieving people because everyone mm-hmm. forgets that like they all made it home okay. So this al- this has more higher horsepower than we used to send people to the moon and bring them back. And and what I can do with that as part of my day, like I feel like that the personal of personal computing is the part that doesn't always get its due and that's the part that apple's really really good at because otherwise like 
my family could not have technology and my family would not be able to FaceTime each other and, you know, stay in touch and all that kind of stuff because my family are not a technical people. It's cool. I'm adopted. It's fine. <laughs> but they're, they, but like they're, they are not technologically inclined and yet they have iPhones and the ones who have computers have Apple computers and we've enabled, and it enables them to have the technology in their lives that they want and use it the way that they want to. And they don't have to be me in order to get that done. And we are all still really impatient because a lot of the discussion here has been about what's next. I mean, usually we don't do these kind of look back shows, but this this article struck me as something as as a good fodder for some discussion. And I knew we'd split the other way and talk about, OK, we've, we've had this. This is what we want. This is where we're going. Kelly, to, to your point, though, I, I did want to point out my personal favorite for some obvious reasons. Number 33, Apple enables the podcasting boom. I mean, mm-hmm. think, think you're, you're right. Mm-hmm. We couldn't be doing this without a lot, so much of the Apple tech that came before and specifically the iPod, which, mm-hmm. you know, kind of helped create podcasting, let these, let these very niche kind of things, these very specific interest kind of things possible. Otherwise we'd still be at the mercy of the big networks and, you know, maybe, think, maybe something would have developed mm-hmm. along the way, but they mm-hmm. got there first. But I think people they, forget that the, the pod in podcasts is because of iPod. Like, right. That's where the word comes from. And right. I know nobody wants to talk about an iPod anymore because they're, you know, they're the creaky old grandpas of technology these days. And that's fine. And, you know, like the amount of grief that I'm going to get from people for being able to hold this up on screen and say that I still use it and be able to show you the 30 pin cable I use to charge it regularly. You know, I get it. It's fine. Um, I do not look forward to your letters. I will not be taking questions at this time. However, like, the like i think it's a thing that sort of gets overlooked a lot of times you know because spotify has paid podcasts and all these other things are happening you know and people are making all these all these paid things and all these money but like think about all the podcasters and think about all of the stuff that you have gotten to listen to again maybe more so in the last year and you know all of that has been enabled as a direct result of apple putting out the ipod and people going well what else can i put on this besides napster music i've heard Allegedly. Thank Honestly. you, but awfully, awfully quiet. You worry me because that usually means that there's a storm. It means he's up to something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, that I'll, was very I'll, convincing. I'll be, Bravo, I'll be, Frank. I'll be quite honest with you. I, I, everything that, remember when we first came on, I said everything was breaking down. I had one AirPod go out. I had to recharge that, got that one in. Then the other one went out, put that one in. I'm trying to re- follow our chat. And then you start talking about web. And I'm like, oh, geez, how do I get the YouTube chat up? <laughs> and I'm following all the other conversations. So so you, you're just, you're, you're on information overload. I, I think the whole, I, the, from what I was getting, you know, because the conversation being a person who's not a real, uh, why well, I, I, I know nothing of tech. I'm one of those people. If somebody says, "Oh, I used model," blown. well, like when um, when guy mentions his microphones, and he'll <laughs> give a model number. I know nothing of model numbers. I'm sort of in the vein of uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Paul McCartney. He has this guy. And all he does is take care of his bases. McCartney has no idea the names or the numbers of his bases, what kind of strings he uses or anything. He has this guy just take care of it. So what I do is I'm coming at this technology from that angle. I use it to make podcasts. I know how to operate it to make a podcast. Why it can do it, I haven't a clue. Mm-hmm. But I know that I can use it to meet the goals I want to achieve. And that's kind of what it's all about. You know, I, I mean, we we love the stuff. Of, a lot of us here love it. And some of us are into it deeper than others. And others, some of us are into it, some aspects of it deeper than others. But at the end of the day, it's all about achieving whatever it is uh, that you want to achieve. And so, yeah, I, I, I think you're right, Frank. I kind of think sometimes we lose sight of that because we're the geeks. There, there are a whole lot of people out there 
that are now using technology that would have been the purview of geeks, only the purview of geeks, you know, five, 10 years ago. So, you know, what do you mean? Speak for yourself, Jay. What? (laughs) 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 I like to think of us as trendsetters. (laughs) Well, I, I, I think we are. I mean, in, modestly speaking, I don't think there's any question about it. And that's, I mean, here we go to, to shift back to the article. I think Apple was, has been a trendsetter along the way. That doesn't mean every trend they tried to set was perfect. Um, I mean, one of them, I got to find it. Which one? The uh, the Newton. Number 32, yeah. <laughs> Newton message pad arrived too early. Yeah, it yeah. was too early. It was a great idea, but the tech wasn't there. The chips weren't there. The tech wasn't there. And frankly, none of us were exactly probably ready for it at no. that point. I think- but it was ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing you can say about Apple, whether whether you appreciate it or not, is they always take a big swing. We're going to bet big on USB, USB-A. You know, we're going to we're going to forsake ADB entirely. That's what we're doing. And while we're at it, not only are we going to only give you USB ports, you know, what we're not giving you a floppy drive. Mm hmm. Take that. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you a disk drive. Now we're going to give you a disk drive that will burn disks. Now we're going to give you one that will read and write, you know, CDs. Now we're going to give you one that will read and write DVDs. Now we're going to give you, you know, like there's always been sort of this relentless march forward. And, you know, people are like, oh, planned obsolescence, you know, and I'm like, do you not remember when all of a sudden Apple forgot how to spell ADB? Like, am I the only person who remembers getting an iMac and going, none of my stuff is going to connect to this? Like, come on. So I think there's a certain amount of that, you know, just like the pod and podcast, you know, I think there's a certain amount of this stuff that sometimes just gets overlooked or, uh, you know, people who haven't been around enough to see as much stuff as some of us have seen. And, you know, we've seen some stuff. I mean, look at Frank's beard. You can tell he's seen some stuff. Um, (laughs) So there's, I think... I think just sometimes some of those things get overlooked as these things become, you know, Chuck, you and I have talked about this, about, you know, the microwave, like the microwave was a revolution when it started out. Now everybody has one in their house and everyone goes, oh my God, it's going to take two minutes to heat the thing. And I just don't know what to do, you know, because the, the microwave has faded into the technological landscape of the kitchen. Like it's just a given that your kitchen's going to have a microwave. And when the microwave breaks, nobody knows what to do. And that's life. And like, the the iPhone and like the revolution of the technology in the iPhone and the iPad and that kind of stuff is turning into the microwave. Like it's a given that you're going to have a certain amount of technology in your pocket at all times, the end. And that's the way things are. And I think that's where some of the impatience and stuff comes from is like, I expect this to do all these magical things, you know, um, you know, there was a, a stand up comedy bit. I can't remember now where it's like, where you know people complain about flying like you are in a metal tube and in three hours you're going to be three time zones away and what you're complaining and that's magical and it is a feat of engineering and what you're doing is complaining about peanuts i think that's carlin it seems very carliny um yeah, but like agree. that like the i feel like the iphone is turning into the microwave and that's why people are finding a lot more fault with some of the some of those mm-hmm. sorts of things so um, like, think about what your phone enables you to do that it did not, that you couldn't do before. Well, you know, it is also, I think people are getting spoiled because stuff is, technology is starting to roll at such a rapid rate. And people are coming up with ideas out of nowhere. And everybody's idea is to a degree valid. That I think people almost get disappointed if we don't keep going faster and faster and faster and faster in doing things. I was going to say the opposite. Like when we first got them, every time we got a new phone, it was a revolutionary experience, you know. Right now uh, it's evolutionary. Said, yeah. Jay right. said he had a 3GS and I'm like, oh, you had the one with video because I remember that being like the world changer. You know, the oh, 3GS yeah. was the one with video. Dude, you know, and then like when you, you know, like for, you know, we got video and then we got copy paste and then we got good pictures and then we got touch ID and then we got Apple pay. And now like it comes out and it's like, eh, you know, like what I don't else you know, got my phone. So yeah. it shoots 4k, you know, eh, you know like I, I, it's I not the, the, the world changer anymore. 
Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.